And happy St. Patrick's Day. It is March 17th, 2023. So glad to have you with us today. I'm Derek Shore. And my special guest co-host for today is no stranger to breaking records. We first met her when she became the first Filipina American to win both Miss Texas and Miss USA. I'm getting chills, truly I am. But she did not stop there. Now she is representing H-Town on the world stage. Please welcome back to Houston Life, our friend, now Miss Universe, Arvini Gabriel. Come on out of door number two. There she is, Arvini. <laughs> it is so good to see you. Great to see you. How are you doing? You know, better now that you're here, show off that sad. Can we just have yes. a moment for this? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got to uh, tell us how you feel. Have a seat, please. Thank you. It is such an honor to have you in the co-host seat today. Uh, and yes. <laughs> welcome back to rainy Houston. I know. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. I thought I was going to come home and there was going to be warm weather and clouds, but it's OK. It was warm last week. Uh, OK, so tell us why you're back in town. So I am back in town officially for my homecoming. I'm celebrating the Miss Universe win with my friends and my family in the city. I actually haven't been home all year ever since I won Miss Universe on January 14th. So it's a big celebration. It's a big celebration. We're so glad to have you uh, back. And I would like to take credit for mixing these cocktails, but I did Ooh. not. Uh, our friends over at Flight Club Houston brought us this special uh, pot of gold cocktail. So Flight Club is in Montrose, and this is made with Drashambo gunpowder, Irish gin, matcha mint tea, egg white, lemon, and gold dust. I love matcha, so everything sounded incredible. <laughs> it's, it's nice and healthy, and the gold dust on, on top is so beautiful. Wow. Cheers to St. Patrick's Day. You can you can buy this drink just through the weekend um, at, at Flight Club. It's 14 bucks now through Sunday. And also, cheers to a happy early birthday to you, Arvini. Thank you. Coming up on Monday, huh? Cheers. Cheers, yes, on Monday. Cheers to you. Well, and thank you so much to Flight Club for, for these delicious cocktails. Okay, so catch us up because we first met. You're from Missouri City. Mm -hmm. You were representing Friendswood in the pageant uh, when you won Miss Texas and then eventually won Miss USA and now Miss Universe. And I got to tell you, I love following you on Instagram. I, I don't know how you're sleeping and how you're doing it. You won the <laughs> crown and then the next day you moved to New York City. The very next day with just my three suitcases that I had from Miss Universe and moved in the next day. I got to my New York apartment at 3 a.m., took a little nap, and then I woke up and the hair and makeup was knocking on my door. They did my hair and makeup and it was straight to the interviews. So I did the whole media blitz extremely fast. It was crazy, but right after Miss Universe, I went straight into interviews. Oh my gosh, and essentially you were doing national more shows and it's hard to believe that after this moment truly a life-changing moment for you uh, you you would be getting no no sleep we mentioned <laughs> you were the first Filipina American woman to be crowned Miss Texas and Miss USA the first Miss USA representative to win Miss Universe in a decade uh, what's it like for you as you mentioned you so you grew up in Missouri City yes and when you, uh, you you're a hometown girl what has the response been for you just from your I don't know former classmates in school and friends and family <laughs> well let me tell you all my high school friends that I hadn't talked to in a while were sending me texts and it was so good to hear from them and you know what they love doing is pulling up old embarrassing photos of me from high school uh -oh. and middle school and they'll post it on social media and I just have to laugh about it but it brings back memories I mean I have so much love and support from Houston because I'm born and raised here so it feels great to be back I definitely feel the love here. Well, you're, uh, you've got a lot of fans, <laughs> and I know your roots are strong here. By the way, the event that's happening, your homecoming event that's happening tomorrow at the Post Oak Hotel. Yes. That's the good news, that it's the homecoming event happening. The bad news is it is totally sold out. Yes. But that's a testament to just how, how well-loved you are. You know, it's so funny. Every time I throw an event or something, I get nervous. Like, is anybody going to come? And then the ticket sold out within a few hours, and I was like, aw. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, uh, you deserve it. You deserve it. Listen, it's so interesting uh, that you're here. You and I share more in common than, than maybe you realize. Because in high school, I know you're giving me that look like what is coming. So in <laughs> high school, when I was a senior, I was voted most likely to be Mr. Universe. Really? You didn't tell me this. Well, <laughs> and here's the thing. I think my Stop. senior class, I'm not sure how they even earned their diplomas. Mr. Universe is a bodybuilding <laughs> competition. Stop. 
up. I love this. <laughs> it, is, it has nothing to do with like your pageant, which actually involves <laughs> talent and smarts and all of those things. So and can working you out too, you know. So it kind of makes sense. I'm pretty sure that photo was taken before you were born. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> I don't know. It was 1999. <laughs> so uh, listen, I, I feel like beauty pageants for for a lot of folks, maybe there's like a stigma about them, right? Because oh, yeah. they they make all kinds of assumptions. I'm sure you've dealt, actually, I, I've known you for long enough to know you have dealt with this, where people look at you <laughs> and they just assume that no, nothing is there. Right. You have so much substance. Your heart is in such a great place. Uh, from the story of your family coming to the United States to your work with women who are trying to get back on their feet, mm -hmm. Magpies and Peacocks, which has an incredible training program to help women find jobs and get into the workforce and get out of abusive situations. Right. Was this part, was it something your parents taught you, or where do you think uh, the fabric of our Albany develop such compassion and empathy? Uh, yeah, I would have to give all credit to my parents. My mom and my dad have been so supportive, but they really enriched my life and put me through so many opportunities. Like my dad always wanted me to try everything, whether that was ballet or dance. I did school band, played the clarinet, oboe. I was in yearbook. I was kind of all over the place, but my parents always encouraged me to just go for it. Even if I wasn't good at it, I played volleyball for four years. I wasn't even that great, but at least I still did it but that's when I discovered really what is my calling I, that's where I discovered design and really found my passion just from trial and error well and you are <laughs> very very good at design just this morning I was looking I told you this before the show I was looking at your Instagram page and using recycled sustainable materials I know is also very important to you yes and you design a lot of the clothing you wear uh, what you're wearing now is from magpies and peacocks yes it's beautiful actually <laughs> I'm wearing some stuff too we'll talk more about that later uh, from them Thank you, my friends. <laughs> uh, so I was watching this video of this beautiful blue fabric you were painting and Monet was your inspiration. So you hand painted this fabric and then that was the outfit you wore for your Miss Universe interview. Yes. And at what point in your life did you realize that your love and your passion for design was not just a hobby, but it actually was good enough to be worn in your Miss Universe interview? Mm. I would say when I first started pageants, I was like, I have to make my outfits because at that point I had been sewing for maybe seven, eight years, something like that. And so I was like, this is a great way to show my passion with the world, with the judges in this competition. And at Miss Universe, I mean, that was a dream come true. I said, I have to make my interview outfit. So like you were saying, I hand painted it and the whole story behind that was a beautiful storm and how we're always going through something that's hard, but we have to find that beauty in it. And I really wanted to portray that in my dress. That is so lovely and it came through for sure. <laughs> you are such a role model and inspiration for, for people on so many levels. We have an employee here. She's Filipina, Jonna Lynn, who, hi Jonna Lynn. I She's have to meet her. Today. <laughs> you would love her. And her niece, Noelma, lives in the Philippines. Her family watches Houston Life from the Philippines. And every time you've been on the show, they have all been so excited to see Aww. you. What does it mean for you, not only to hear from people who look, look up to you here in the States and from, from your hometown, down, but also from people in the Philippines. You know, I cannot believe it. It warms my heart because I grew up going to the Philippines just as a child and, you know, just going on vacation there and to actually be somewhat of inspiration to the people in the Philippines now is amazing. And actually, I will be visiting the Philippines soon. In May, we're going to have a huge event there as Miss Universe, so I'm really excited. So for all the Filipinos tuning in, I cannot wait to meet you. That is fantastic. <laughs> Talk about a homecoming. Yes. Okay, so also when you when you were crowned, and I remember even when you were crowned Miss USA, we chatted about this. Right. Dealing with the haters out there. I think suddenly when you <laughs> when you work as as you're in, in the public eye, right? People people pick apart how you look, how you sound, all what you're wearing, your family, your personal all of those things I think can be overwhelming. And it's so interesting for me when I'm just opening a web browser and I'm seeing all of these articles about you popping all up. How has that been for you now that you are literally being written about in publications all over the world? Because you are still the same beautiful, kind, lovely person I've always known. Oh, well, thank you. You know, it's a lot of pressure because I feel like I'm under the limelight even more now. And we have this idea that I am perfect. Everybody thinks that, but I just have to give myself grace and be forgiving if I mess up on my words or my speech sometimes. And you just can't take 
anything too seriously at the end of the day. And the negativity, it will never go away with the comments and everything. Yeah. I'm dealing with it, or I'm getting used to it more and more, but I just try to move on from it. That's it. You know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, they said that about me, but I'm like, I don't even know who this person is. So I just got to keep going. Yeah, well, I think that's a great attitude. And uh, as your star continues rising, you know, dealing with the haters is just na name of the game, right? Right. I just try to stay focused on what I'm doing as Miss Universe. I mean, I like to think that I am too busy to look at anything else, look at any of the negativity. If I'm too busy filling my mind and my thoughts and my schedule with good things, productive things, then I shouldn't have time for that. There you go. <laughs> Amen, sister. Amen. Well, listen, cheers I still, to that. Cheers to you. And thank you so much for co-hosting the show with me today. I know uh, you've, you've done a lot of things in your life. This one is, you know, something you're doing for the very first time. You're going to be great. I yes. know it. Oh, fingers and, crossed. <laughs> and we still have much more with Miss Universe Arvini Gabriel, including what is next for you. So what do you say we move to the sofa? We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Happy early birthday right, to thank you. you. Welcome back to Houston Life. Derek Shore here along with Miss Universe Arvini Gabriel. Uh, we did a, like a little wardrobe update during the break. What happened? Did we get the cocktail stuck in our teeth? It happens to the best Maybe. of Maybe. There was gold flakes, so I think I got excited. and. Do I have gold over... flakes in my teeth? No, do I? Oh, I've always wanted a gold tooth. No, you don't. You look perfect. Hopefully they can't see anything from here. <laughs> so before the break, we were chatting uh, a little bit about your life and what a whirlwind it's been since you won the crown. I still can't believe you're on stage winning the crown and then suddenly you're on an airplane moving into your brand new apartment in New York City. How has that adjustment been for you? Because I know the media blitz happened right away. It's still happening because you're on TV and magazines everywhere. Uh, but has life calmed down at all? Have you had a chance to spend time at your apartment in New York? Not one bit. It has not calmed down, but I'm not complaining at all. It's very fast paced. There's a lot on my plate, but I love it. And I do have a day to recharge usually on Sunday. And that's where I'll sleep in with no alarm and I can really just focus on what my week is ahead. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> and when you come back here to Houston, do you have your list, like your top five or top 10 list of spots you have to stop at or people you have to see? People I have to see, yes. I have all my girlfriends coming in town, especially because it's my birthday weekend. So I'm so glad I'll see them and the family. They're coming in town too. As far as restaurants, I absolutely love Ensamada. So that's like a Filipino treat. And all right. there is a spot, Godo's, that sells them. And then Jerry's Grill is a good Filipino restaurant that has synagogue soup. So I don't know if I'll actually have time to go there because my schedule is really busy. But if I have a moment free, I'll go there. Maybe even for takeout. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's chat about more about your background as a fashion designer. So you essentially own your own label, Arbany Nola, is that it? Correct. Okay, Arbany Nola, <laughs> you can find it on Instagram. So mm -hmm. your garments are made using eco-friendly and eco-conscious materials, recycled materials. This is important because a lot of people don't realize the fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world. Yes. More than 80% of clothing ends up in a landfill or being shipped off to other countries where we hope they can figure out what to do with it. Look at you, yes. An <laughs> Isn't it true uh, that most of the people working in the fashion industry, one in five people in the world are working in the fashion industry, a lot of times women making less than $3 a day. Correct, yeah. So you want to be sure that your work is actually affecting change and helping people out of poverty mm -hmm. and not filling our landfills with textiles. Correct. You need to come with me everywhere. That was great. But, you know, a lot of people, I feel like, don't realize that. I didn't learn that until I was maybe five years into the fashion industry already. And then I learned all these facts and I said, you you know what, we need to make a change. So as Miss Universe, that is one of my missions, not only to educate people, but hopefully make improvements. It seems like a massive, when we talk about these statistics, a massive global problem, right. literally. And so uh, what are things that we can all do to r reduce our footprint, essentially? We, we hear a lot about disposable clothing or fast fashion. Yeah, so it's being mindful, for one, recognizing that. Two, you can go to the thrift store or vintage stores or swap clothes with your friends friends or sometimes if we have a hole in our shirt we just want to throw it away but you can take it to the tailor and they'll mend it up so it's just like really um, putting the longevity of your clothes to make them more useful 
Yeah, little things yeah. that we can all do. Instead of buying <laughs> new, fix that hole. Um, maybe you can show me how to do a, uh, a fix a fix a little hole. I can show that to you. <laughs> maybe, maybe. It might maybe. take a minute. Or I'll do it for you. <laughs> okay, we got to talk about this beautiful cape you wore during the Miss Universe pageant. And I saw the video of you working behind the scenes on it. Actually, here is that video. Oh, yes. So tell us your process here because you're essentially recycling materials and using them in this piece. Right, so the whole concept uh, behind this design was Phoenix rising from the ashes. Ashes. So a bird just coming up from adversity and ashes into something beau, beautiful, beau, wow, new, beautiful, and strong. Yeah. So I took plastic bottles and I cut them up, I melted them, and I painted them, and I put them on the, this back piece to make them look like wings, like a phoenix. And here's some silk, which is an eco-friendly fiber. I ended up dyeing it orange and red and black to make it look like the phoenix. Wow, and look at this finished product. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful, and it looks great there on the mannequin, but it looked even better on you in the patch. Look at this. Woo, it's crazy because I worked on that for two weeks straight wow. through Christmas and even New Year's, and I changed the design maybe 10 times, and I almost scrapped it. I actually worked on it the day before I left for Miss Universe competition, and I mean, that thing took way too much work, but I'm glad I finally was able to finish it. It looked gorgeous. <laughs> so you almost scrapped it because you didn't think it was going to work? It was one of those projects where you look at it too long and you're like, I don't know if this is going anywhere. And then I was like, you know what? I have to do it because Miss Universe has a deadline. So it looks beautiful. <laughs> it does look beautiful. Well, thank you. Magpies and Peacocks is an organization. You've talked about them on the show before. We featured one of the designers here. In fact, today you are wearing a piece from them. And this is your work behind the scenes there. Yes. Talk to us about uh, what drew you to become a sewing instructor there. Because this, this is an incredible skill for people to learn, but the meaning behind the work is even more important. So funny story, when I heard about Magpies and Peacocks and their sustainability mission, I was like, I need to visit this place. So I went in one day for a tour and the owner, Ashia, was there. She was giving me a tour and then she was telling me about their maker program that they're starting, which is teaching sewing classes to women that have survived from domestic violence and human trafficking. And I said, are y'all looking for a teacher? I would love to be a part of that. And she basically just hired me on the spot. So I kind of just really dove straight into Magpies Pies and Peacocks and then fast forward to now I've taught a lot of women and I've built really great relationships with them and just help uproot them. I'm going to see some of them this weekend and some of them actually helped me make my wardrobe for Miss Universe. That is so lovely. <laughs> I love hearing that story and people often forget that when someone's in a bad situation domestically maybe they're trying to escape domestic abuse and they don't you know where do they go? I have no money. How am I going to support myself or my kids? Mm -hmm. At Magpies and Peacocks you're teaching real world skills to people so they can get jobs and they're also paid while they're going through the classes, right? To help give them a leg up. Correct, and it's all about being a stepping stone for their future. Like you said, it's a skill they can have for the rest of their life and if they wanna get a job somewhere else or become entrepreneurs and own their own business, that's one way to do it. You're teaching them how to fish, <laughs> essentially. Catch their own fish. <laughs> yeah. So my accessories today, this is from Magpies and Peacocks, uh, using remnants, essentially, it was created. Look at this beautiful little box, in a cigar box, uh, a little boat tie and a pocket square and a little pop of flair, I believe. Is that what it's called in the mm -hmm. industry? A little pocket flair? Yes. So I am proud to be sporting <laughs> their it. stuff today. And uh, again, these materials would have normally ended up in a landfill, but instead right now they're in my pocket. So Love it. Well, Arbany, uh, thanks again for hanging out with us, but you've got the full hour with us. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about hosting the show with me? I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited about it. Because it's my first time. So. And you're going to be great. So so go ahead and just read the words on the screen there. Okay, let's see. Still ahead, we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day with a special performance.